Remember that crazy Hisense UX TV that we saw at CES? Well, I've got good news and maybe not so good news. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and I just got back from a trip to New York where I got another chance to look at Hisense's 2023 TV lineup. I also learned a few pretty interesting things about where Hisense is going as a brand and how it might just be about to blow up in a big way. At first it all seemed like inside baseball stuff, but the more I thought about it, the more I realized this is kind of a big deal. So get ready for a TV update you didn't even know you wanted to hear about. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering where the TV reviews are, fair. I feel like I've been waiting forever too. Good news though, the reviews are coming. In fact, the next video you see from me will be on the LG G3 OLED with MLA and it's just gonna get crazy from there. So slap this video with a like if you're excited and subscribe so you don't miss that one. And you are not gonna wanna miss that video or the one that comes after that, trust me. Okay, let's dig into this high set stuff. So I'm gonna start off by talking about where Hisense is going as a brand, and then I'll get into what we know about its 2023 TVs, including that UX model that was teased at CES as a maybe we'll get it, maybe we won't model. But first, why is any of this important? Because the more Hisense grows, the more likely its TVs are gonna get better and the more pressure it puts on its competitors. And competition tends to benefit consumers. Plus, it just makes for fun TV drama. So this whole event that Zeke and I traveled to in New York City was one pretty big, probably very expensive shindig to basically announce the fact that Hisense has now partnered with the NBA. And that's cool for Hisense, but not what I thought I flew to NYC for. Fortunately, I ended up getting a bunch of really great info. And like I said, I got to take a much closer look at the 2023 lineup. By the way, for those outside of the US or otherwise unaware, NBA stands for National Basketball Association, which did something like 10 billion in revenue last season. So big partnership potential for Hisense. Now, normally I tend to dismiss these kinds of partnerships. I mean, of course, Samsung is putting massive displays inside sports stadiums. Samsung is loaded and it's a really popular brand and it does huge partner deals all the time. But then we hear that TCL, has partnered with the NFL, and now Hisense is partnering with the NBA. And I think it's pretty clear that while TCL and Hisense are the number two and three selling brands in North America, not necessarily in that order, by the way, that does not mean that they enjoy the kind of brand recognition and mind share that say Samsung, Sony, and LG do. And that makes it hard for those brands to secure dominance in the US market. Like Samsung is just way out ahead of them, but Maybe not for long because we love our football and basketball here. So if every time somebody watches a football game, they get exposed to the TCL brand or when watching an NBA game, they get exposed to the Hisense brand, all of a sudden when they walk into a Best Buy or whatever to look at TVs, those brands are now familiar to them where they may not have been just a year ago. And folks, I cannot overstate how huge that'll be for TCL and Hisense. They're already moving a ton of units, but when their brand starts getting a foothold through greater mindshare in North America, when people who haven't bought a TV in five years know about TCL and Hisense already, I mean, I feel like TCL and Hisense were likely to be the next LG and Samsung for a while now, but I didn't feel like I had a read on when that might happen until now. I think it's gonna start happening right now. So looking forward, how is Hisense differentiating itself? I know it isn't just relying on plastering its logo everywhere. I wondered, so I asked, and here's what I found out. You know how TV manufacturers don't usually put the actual refresh rate of their panels on the box or even in the spec section on product pages? Instead of being clear about a 60 hertz or 120 hertz panel, they print something annoying and arguably misleading, like 480 hertz clear motion or whatever. Well, Hisense says it isn't gonna play that game anymore. If its TV has a 60 hertz panel, the box says so. If it has a 120 hertz panel, it'll say that. And by the way, both the U7K and U8K this year have 144 hertz panels, straight up. Hisense is also done playing coy with mini LED technology as a premium only technology. The U6K, which starts at $500, has a mini LED backlight system and it's all mini LED up from there. 
And along the same lines, Hisense is clearly marking its boxes with the peak brightness ratings for its TVs. Nobody else does that. Not only are they putting it right out there, which honestly is a bit of flex on its own, but they're using conservative numbers. For example, the U7K may say 1500 nits, but it's gonna go much higher than that. We've seen that play out here when I measure the TVs. I asked Hisense America's president, David Gold, about that, and he said, Hisense would rather underpromise and overdeliver than go the much more common route of overpromising and underdelivering. And from a brand perspective, I have a lot of respect for that. Now, I think that kind of transparency, all that stuff is very solid strategy, but will it be enough to earn Hisense universal love and acceptance in North America, especially in the US? I mean, at the end of the day, Hisense is a China-based brand. And in a world where we hear a lot about spying, I mean, Congress is out here trying to ban TikTok, right? A lot of folks in the US may look at China-made tech products as being risky. Can Hisense get over that hump? I mean, to be clear, the Hisense TVs we get here are actually made in Mexico and they run Google or Roku OS, which are made by US companies. But still, there will be worries. I read about them all the time in the comments. I don't know, I think that Hisense has a pretty good shot. It says it's already the number two brand in North America by units shipped, although admittedly, that's just for the first two months of 2023, so we'll see if that sticks. But clearly, Hisense has got a big upward trajectory going for itself, and ultimately, I think that will benefit us as consumers. Hisense has already kind of taken the reins and gotten corporate in China to ship them the products they know we want. I think we'll continue to see better and better TVs year after year, and along those lines, I think the 2023 TVs will be the highest value TVs we've seen from Hisense yet. Maybe the best of the bunch this year. We'll see. I mean, if Hisense can push the U7K and U8K performance up past the U7 and U8H levels that we saw last year, while keeping the prices about the same or even lower, that's gonna be some formidable stuff right there. And from what I've seen so far, I think they've made some considerable progress. The processing definitely looks better this year. I'm gonna hold off until I can actually test these things, but I'd say I'm more optimistic than pessimistic right now. And then there's the UX. This TV caught a lot of attention at CES because it promised some really big things. The only problem was Hisense was non-committal about whether they would bring that TV to the US. Their worry was that a really expensive, albeit hot rod TV from Hisense, maybe wasn't something that North American buyers were ready for. And I think they were right to be worried. And it seems as if they are still a little bit worried because the good news is that the UX will be available in the US. The bad news is there will not be very many of them to buy. It's like they're doing a limited run, a special limited edition only for special folks. Like maybe they're trying to create demand with scarcity. It seems like that, but whatever their motivation, it will be hard to get your hands on Hisense's ridiculously bright and beautiful looking UX TV. And if you do, you'll be taking home an 85 inch TV because that's the only size in which it is available. Speaking of availability, when will we see these TVs in the US? Well, the U6, 7, and 8K models are due this summer, but Hisense tells me it will be the early part of Q3. So we do have to wait a little bit longer, but not as long as August. I'm thinking late May, early June maybe. As for the UX, who knows? That could be an end of year thing and Lord knows how expensive it'll end up being. Oh, and one more thing some of you may be very happy to hear. Hisense has heard the frustrations of those in Australia and other markets where the U8 model that ships to those areas is nowhere near as good a TV as the U8 model we're crowing about here in the US. They are actively working to tighten that disparity up and or just change the model numbers at least. So let's hope they make big moves quickly on that tip because I know it's generated a lot of frustration out there. So that's the deal on Hisense. I think it may end up being a big year for them and I'm looking forward to reviewing their TVs to see whether that gut instinct plays out to be true. Thanks as always for watching everyone. Leave me your thoughts in a comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one or check out this video I did from CES on Hisense's new lineup as well as this other video on TCL's TV plans.